That was in the, I think, 2K PKO. Um, we have three left. And the situation is the following. We have ace five off on the button with 13 big blinds, small blind 35 big blinds, big blind uh, with 13 big blinds. And yeah, I folded ace five off. Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna continue with the hand review and I picked two ICM spots. The first one uh, from the final table bubble of the 5K and the other one is from the final table of a 1K or 2K PKO. And we're gonna jump right into the action with the uh, 5K final table bubble where I had to make a decision for my tournament life which is on the final table bubble always. Something you don't necessarily want to do unless you have aces, kings, or maybe queens. Um, so let's have a look into the spot that I'm talking about. Oh, that's the wrong. So the situation was as follows as the following. We were 10 players, uh, nine players make the final table and small blind, a good rack, open jams. And yeah, we... We have to make a decision. What do you guys think? You can see the stack size at this point in time. I mean, I won the hand, spoiler alarm. Um, so silent mode had around 25 big blinds and you could see that uh, there were a couple of other shorter stacks. We had 23 big blind, 24 big blinds and we were, uh, uh, I think second last, no third last. Yeah, around eighth position. So now I, I think that most players I mean, usually in general, I would say people underestimate ICM, but also overvalue ICM in certain situations. So here, um, his shoving range is going to be a lot of ASEX, especially low X, a lot of low pairs, a lot of broadware, some connectors. And a lot of the time, we're going to be have going to be having him dominate. I think he's going to would be inducing with a nines, tens, at least aces and kings. A lot of the times, I don't think he would just open shove it. So because if we have sixes, like if we have sixes, fives, I would probably lean more towards folding. But if he raises three, three and a half big blinds, I'm more incentivized just to regem on him. So. Let's have a look at um, let's have a look at the results and see what we are supposed to be calling here. And of course, it always depends on the shoving range, and we have to make some uh, assumptions, right? I think I think his shoving range is going to be. Um, wait, I have to make sure I have the right. Here we go. So I think he's not going to be shoving. Like first of all, let's let's, let's have a look into. Um, let's have a look into the um, the ranges here. I'm going to just run it once again to make sure we get very accurate results. And of course, we want to first have a look. What is the what is the Nash range? What is the Nash equilibrium to see whether this makes sense or not? Um, I just have to unlock this and run it again for our small blind range. So yeah, he could technically open shaft around 88%. I think that's, that's very realistic. I think he's not going to be open shoving 10 through off. I think we can go a little tighter here. Um, and he's also going to mix in. I think if he has some bottom hands, he's going to be limping it or raising it. And I think we can uh, take out some of these, these better hands. I don't want to make it um, too optimistic in my favor, but I think it's very likely that he's not going to be open shoving um, ten, 10s or ace queen. I mean, it's not that it has the worst playability, so he might, he might. It doesn't have such a huge impact on, on sevens here. Um, it's more important how he plays his pocket pairs. Let's, let's make it a little more tighter around here. Um, uh, maybe just really shoving the hands where 
he's not completely fucked if if if, if getting called so suited kings um yeah maybe something like that and you can see that sevens is very very borderline and um i would have thought it's a little it's a little better um but yeah i i to be honest i would also think that even nines might be in this, this trapping range um then sevens should be a, a little better uh not that much actually ah oh, damn it I fucked it up again <laughs> um so let's do something like this Yeah, so it's very borderline. And I think that a lot of the players would be would think, wow, we have to be super, super tight. Yes, we're about to make a ladder jump, but also um, you can't wait until you have aces or kings in these spots. And if we would be like, if there would be more shorter stacks, let's say if there would be a five big blind. So when we would be guaranteed to be to make the next pay jump, we should fold. However, um, you also have to keep in mind that uh, we have to keep. You have to keep in mind that. Wait, I have to pull up the hand again. Uh, HRC, I mean. That. When there's a five pick blind shorty, you can just wait. You're gonna be in the final table. When you have 20, 25 pick blinds, and there's another 13 big blind stack, until he's forced to be all in or auto all in, you're very likely going to get into another confrontation, and then he doubles up, and you're down to 10 big blinds. So. It's not that we can super crazy lose. I mean, we still have to be called off relatively tight. I mean, he can be shoving freaking 40% and we still have to forward ace nine off, right? However, um, it's not that you should be folding eights here. I think folding eights would be a mistake. I think folding sevens is fine. I would have thought it would, might be more profitable. If I see this EV now in hindsight, I'm leaning more towards folding, even though I won the hand with a huge, huge sweat. Um, so I would be calling ace 10 and better and, and, and pocket eights and better. I think here in hindsight would be what I would be calling with. Um, I mean, if we if we make it even more tighter, um, it's it's always hard to say how you approach. I think suited kings are very much no brainer gems, some suited stuff like that. Yeah, then yeah, it doesn't change that much. Um, so it just makes it better with the ASICs, I think, a little. Um, we end up calling and <laughs> we faded. We dodged everything. And also, that's that was the reason why I wasn't so mad with the uh, with the suck out. I sucked. I, I lost queens against jacks. Uh, I lost kings against uh, ace jack. Uh, I lost, I think, one or two more flips on the final table. But I also sucked out with ace jack against kings. So even though I've lost majority of my owns on the final table, I was holding these flips that made it possible for me to reach the final table in the first place so of course the first moment even though i get a sucker i was like all right ultimately they're going to happen whether it's at the end of a tournament it's at the beginning of the tournament it does it shouldn't really matter um so when you get that far you needed to win a lot of flips you needed to have a lot of setups with value hands where you're where you've nuts your opponent has second nuts so never forget that uh the second hand where i actually got some messages people were very surprised why I snap folded this hand uh, that was in a One second I have to pull up the hand that was in a I think 2k PKO um, we have three left and the situation is the following we have ace five off on the button with 13 big blinds small blind 35 big blinds big blind uh, with 13 big blinds and yeah I folded ace five off uh, we have 42k for first and second so it's quite important for us to reach heads up to lock up the full total price pool for the regular price pool and i also run this in hrc and i want you guys to pause for a second and, and of course since i mean i might be wrong maybe it's a jam like i don't want to say that i'm right here um but i think it's very important to share so what do you think? What should what would you be jamming here if you see the stacks, if you see the bounties um, that I'm play? It's a 2k, so starting bounty is uh, 500. And um, yeah, let me know what 
what you would be jamming or starting bounty would be 500 that you can win so the starting bounty is 1k um all right then pause the sec pause for a second and just make it up in your mind all right you got it all right then let's look in the results um you can see we're supposed to be oh this is raising sorry we're supposed to be freaking tight here um i already altered the calling range just a little bit uh according to uh, let me just All right, so you see that this would be the, the Nash range, right? Um, and you see that everything is super, super. First of all, going all in is very marginal here. It's it's almost like a semi-satellite because we basically get the same amount for first and second. So for you, for the regular price pool, it doesn't matter if you get second or first. So you, you reach already the, the goal of making, you, you're essentially getting first place for the regular price but at the end you just fight for the bounties if there would be a different payout for the second place then it would change but you're essentially playing a satellite for the regular price pool and as you know satellites can be freaking tight since there is still the pko price pool you can be a little looser since you have and it's still an incentive to collect chip chips if it would be a pure satellite you have no incentive to collect chips you just want to get into the money whether you make it with one chip or 5k chips it doesn't matter so here though, um, so it's but it's it's kind of like a, it's kind of like in between between a, a freeze out tournament and a satellite. So this results in us being super super tight, and of course when we have the largest bounty at this point in time, even though if you have a regular bounty like let's say five k or four k, people would not fold sevens here against the button jam. Like I think most people would call seven sixes, ace ten suited, ace ten off, ace nine suited, and I can also imagine some king queen suited calls. Same for the big blind. I think that he's going to be calling ace nine, ace ten for sure. So now let's run it again, and you see that we get super super tight here to to go all in with. We have some room to do some min raising. We could could induce with jacks and better uh, mix in some ace nines. Um, we have to make sure that we don't mix in too many hands. This is something I was doing here. So if I would min raise, I would be min raising probably a range like this. Uh, but then on the other side, it weakens your jamming range, and you have to be careful that you actually then have to end up jamming tighter. So you really have to put in these hands in your raising range. Um, yeah, probably anything that plays somewhat well post-flop. Uh, you just have to check with the frequencies how wide they can re-jam against that. Um, okay, yeah. So so we can still open a, a few hands here. Yeah, some, something along the line of that. Um, so you you can you can you can either play shove your entire range. This is also very player dependent. Some react very are getting provoked uh, essentially by by those min raises with your short stacks. So you have to be very careful. And some play very passive, and they always perceive you having a strong hand. And you can go even uh, wider than that. I think just having an ace is pretty good here, blocking their all in range, uh, and still being suited. So. I think it's okay if you mix in some some raise folds and then some and then definitely like my main my main approach is always when i know a hand is borderline so i mean ace five off should be a clear fold of course but let's say if i have ace nine off and i know like okay it's kind of borderline, just min raise it because we you know you're gonna have aces kings queens and jacks right so i would just go ahead and min raise those hands as well and if i jam um let's say tens i'm not gonna get action from the lower pairs but if i raise i get action from uh, all these pairs and some lower suited aces and i don't mind t getting into a 70 percent equity spot i take it all day long so uh, of course sometimes you play post so you lose the pot and then you hate yourself and wish you would have jammed pre-flop but in the long run uh, trapping with those hands going to be generating you more profit so long story short, this is a spot in, in contradiction to what we just heard uh, with a 7-7 spot. 
you have to be freaking tight. You have to be freaking tight, especially in a PKO. And if you want to know more about and learn more about how to approach PKO spots, we have a bounty course. I don't want to make too much advertisement, but this is a freaking fucking awesome course that will help you understanding the fundamentals of PKO. Goes very deep. Nico is an excellent coach. Uh, and just check it out on RazorEdge.com. We're also going to put some links in the description. Uh, I can highly recommend that if you want to learn more about PKO. However, I think first you should learn the fundamentals in, in with tournament poker and then get into PKO. All right, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments, what would you have jammed in this spot and what would you have caught with the 7-7 seven, seven hand? Be honest, would have been your range on point? Would you have called looser or tighter? Very curious to see what, what a majority of people would have called or would have jammed in these spots. I think I'm pretty sure in the ace five off spot, uh, most of the people would have underestimated the ICM and uh, underestimated the ICM and would have jammed way too loose and basically just losing too much money. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time and best of luck during Scoop.